So now that we've looked at the different patterns associated with vertebrate circulation, we're going to be focusing on the human heart. And this is an example, of course, of mammal circulation. And in the next couple of flowcharts and videos, it's all going to be focused on looking at how the human heart functions within circulation. The human heart is going to undergo, throughout circulation, what is known as several cardiac cycles. Many cardiac cycles will occur throughout a heart's functioning life. A cardiac cycle is going to be defined as the following. When one complete sequence, when the heart undergoes one complete sequence of both filling itself with blood and subsequently, right after, pumping out that blood that was just filled, that's going to be considered one cardiac cycle, one complete sequence of filling and pumping. This is going to be usually denoted as beats per minute. And a cardiac cycle, and on average, a human heart will beat at about 75 beats per minute. So 70 to 75 times we will see a cardiac cycle occur per minute. Now, a cardiac cycle is divided into two specific portions, much like the definition implies, filling and pumping of the heart's blood. So those two portions are then classified as systole and diastole. Systole is going to be the contraction phase of the heart's cardiac cycle. So the contraction phase would be the phase of pumping the blood away from the heart, whereas diastole would be the relax relaxation phase of the heart. This is where you're going to have the filling of the heart with blood. Both of these, when they occur, when both of them occur one after the other, you're going to have one cardiac cycle. So when both occur, that's equal to one cycle also occurring. This is shown nicely in figure 42.7. So take a look at that figure to really drive home this idea of filling and pumping within a cardiac cycle to give you both systole and diastole. In addition to the cardiac cycle, whenever you're studying the human heart, another major component of the heart is how well the heart is functioning, how well it's doing its job, not just how often it's doing its job. So when we want to classify how well a heart is doing its job, we look at something known as cardiac output. So let's take a look at what this means. In the human heart, cardiac output is going to be defined as the volume of blood, the amount of blood, pumped by the left ventricle, specifically looking at this large, very muscular part of the heart known as the left ventricle, LV, pumped by LV per minute. So that's usually our time stamp here, per minute. In this situation, what we're focusing on is the pumping of blood into the systemic circuit. We do not want to look at the pumping of blood into the pulmonary circuit just yet. What we're focusing on is how well can blood be delivered to the systems, to the rest of the body per minute via a cardiac output. Cardiac output is very simply going to be calculated by looking at, so CO, which means cardiac output, by looking at um, both heart rate, how fast the heart is beating, and also what is known as stroke volume, SV for stroke volume. When you multiply both of those, you're going to equate to cardiac output. So again, HR simply stands for heart rate, and this is just beats per minute, so BPM. And stroke volume just equates out to, and we'll write this out, SV stands for stroke volume. This is just going to be the volume of blood volume of blood pumped in one contraction. So we're looking at many of these occurring over one minute, about 75 of them, that will give us a cardiac output level. So we're looking really over here at amount and efficiency and over here simply at how much it's occurring and how often. When we look at the human heart, after we establish some basic calculations with the cardiac cycle and cardiac output, we also want to look at its structure and how that sort of relates back again to its function and how it relates back to the circulatory mechanisms that we've seen thus far. In the human heart, what we specifically notice are very distinct four valves. And the valves, again, are going to be utilized to prevent backflow. That's usually the purpose of any valve within the human body, to prevent backflow, and in order to maintain a unidirectional flow. 
These four valves are going to be highlighted along with other structures of the heart in figure 42.6. Take a look at that figure as we go through the valves. The valves of the heart are simply going to be these flaps of connective tissue that are capable of, again, opening and closing, much like any other valve. But what we want to make sure that we understand is that this is all in an attempt to maintain blood flow that's going in one direction, aka unidirectional blood flow. We do not want backflow. We want to make sure that blood is being pumped in the correct orientation and pathway every single time. Valves of the heart are going to be critical in this process. So let's take a look at two of the valves um, that are going to be of focus in this flowchart. Two valves are going to be known as atrioventricular, otherwise more commonly referred to as AV valves. So the heart has two atrioventricular valves. These are two valves that are found between the atrium and the ventricle. So let's write that down in parentheses. So there are two atria and two ventricles, thus they're going to be two AV valves between atrium plus ventricle. So if you look at the figure, you'll really get a good orientation of what we're talking about in figure 42.6. These two AV valves are going to be called the right AV valve. That's of course going to be separating the right atrium from the right ventricle. This is going to be the first valve that's involved in opening or closing during contraction and relaxation. And then of course the other one would be called the left AV valve. That's again going to be between the left atrium and left ventricle and this will be involved in opening and closing second after the right AV valve has done its job. But how do these both, let's say, function when we're talking about blood flow through the heart? We can basically classify their functioning in the following stepwise orientation. What we have initially is the fact that blood has to come to the heart. And whenever blood's coming to the heart, it's returning from tissues. So that's our first step. Blood returning from tissues. This is blood that has already been used, has already delivered nutrients, now needs to start that cycle over. So the blood is returning from tissues, and that's usually going to be via veins, right? Veins are going towards the heart. Blood returning from tissues via veins are going to then fill up the atria, the atria of the heart. That's going to be the first structure that's going to be involved in filling up. So that's going to be this idea of filling the blood in this cardiac cycle that we saw. What's next? Once you have enough of the atria filled up, you're going to create and sort of sustain blood pressure. BP for blood pressure. That blood pressure is going to be constantly and increasingly pressing on the AV valves, the valves that are going to open and close into from the atrium into the ventricles. So as you increase the amount of blood located within the atria, the pressure on these AV valves increases more and more and more up until the point where you have complete filling of atria, which results in a blood pressure that allows the AV valves and forces them open. Because again, you want to make sure that you are going to the right spot at the right time. Once you have completely filled the atria, you will then have the AV valves open and allow for the blood to go to the next part of the heart, which are the ventricles. So now, because the AV valves are open, you have created an opening, a pathway for blood that's filled in the atria to now fill up the ventricles. You've opened the door to the ventricles. So the ventricles fill with blood. Once they have filled with blood, their job is to contract. Ventricles are very, very critical in the large and strong contractions that are going to send blood to the rest of the body. And that's exactly what happens in the next step. Now, once the ventricles contract, as they're contracting, there's something we want to ensure. We want to ensure that there's no backflow whatsoever. We want to ensure that all the blood is going forward and not backwards into the atria. So during this contraction, what we notice is that the AV valves are explicitly and always going to be closed. The AV valves are very much shut tight to make sure that there's never ever any backflow, that only the blood that's within the ventricles goes towards the rest of the body in the systemic circuit. And essentially what we're stating here is that because the AV valves are closed, there's no backflow at all. No backflow to the atria. This is why our hearts are so efficient, because of the structure and thus the function that we see associated with that very specific structure. So no backflow to the atria. And that covers our first look at the human heart. We now understand the two first initial 
valves, the AV valves. We're going to continue looking at these valves that prevent backflow in the next flowchart.